Intel is officially launching their new desktop processors, the Core Ultra 200S series. So they're replacing the Core i series that we had for 14 generations already, and they are completely new in so many ways. So they have a new design, uh, they have a new architecture, they have a new production process that is also more efficient, and then we have new motherboard chipsets with the new 1851 socket. So there are so many new things to test and so many new things to talk about that will not fit in one single video. So today I am just going to focus on how well these new CPUs perform in games and how do they compare to AMD when it comes to gaming in general. So I do have the Core Ultra 5, 7 and 9, but uh, since most channels will probably focus on the highest end one first, I'm actually going to start with the Core Ultra 7 265K. So let's see how it performs in 40 different games on three different resolutions and how it compares to its main competitor, the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. Let's begin. The new Core Ultra 7 is still a 20-core CPU with 8 performance cores and 12 efficiency cores, but hyper-threading is no longer a thing, so it now has fewer threads than the last generation, but Intel still claims it will be faster in multi-threaded workloads. Compared to the Ultra 9 285K, the Ultra 7 has four fewer E-cores and slightly lower clock speeds, but it is not a huge difference, and in theory, uh, that should make the Ultra 7 almost as fast as the Ultra 9 in gaming, but then for a lot less money. Now, these new CPUs do have an NPU for AI tasks, but uh, 13 tops is not a lot, and if you want to run heavy AI workloads, you will still need a proper graphics card. Memory support is DDR5-5600 for regular memory or DDR5-6400 for memory with the new CU DIMMs, and I do expect these to be the standard very soon. And as I said at the start, I will be comparing this Ultra 7 265K to its main competitor, the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D. Now, both processors were tested under the same conditions on clean test benches uh, with the latest drivers and with the latest Windows version, the 24H2. I used the same RTX 4090 GPU for both CPUs, and as usual, I tried to keep the test benches as fair and as comparable as realistically possible. But if you want to know a bit more about the systems I used and all the testing conditions in general, I will leave all the details in the description box under this video, and you can just go ahead and check that out. If we look at a couple of standard uh, CPU benchmarks, the Core Ultra 7 starts off pretty nicely. In Cinebench 23, it scored just over 36,000 points, which makes it a couple of percent faster than the i7-14700K and about twice as fast than the 7800X3D. When it comes to single-threaded performance, it scored just over 2300 points, which is again an improvement over the last generation of Intel processors and significantly more than the Ryzen 7 yet again. In a quick Blender render, the new Ultra 7 was just ahead of the old i7 and about twice as fast as the Ryzen 7, so the numbers are still very similar to previous benchmarks. Now, the difference with AMD does shrink a bit when you run a bit of a longer render, but even then, the Ryzen 7 is still about 50% behind. One area where Intel definitely made a big improvement is the power consumption. For example, uh, it was faster than the previous generation i7 in a Blender render while using significantly less power. Uh, 193 watts will be a lot easier to cool than 250 watts or more. Of course, on AMD's side, the 87 watts on the 7800X3D are even better, and the Ryzen 9 9950X is even faster at rendering while using the same amount of power. But let's look at the actual games, uh, because here is where things get really interesting. Now, some games like Formula One 2023 uh, that Intel also used for their own slides actually look great. The Ultra 7 is about 9% faster than the 7800X3D on 1080p, 6% faster on 1440p, and 5% faster on 4K resolution. In Borderlands 3, the Ultra 7 is about 25% faster than the 7800X3D on 1080p, 14% faster on 1440p, and they are within 1% of each other on 4K resolution because there you're basically GPU limited the whole time. 
Interestingly enough, in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands that also runs on the Unreal Engine 4 and seems pretty similar to Borderlands overall, we see insignificant differences between the two CPUs. And there are quite a few more games where that difference is quite small. In Spider-Man, for example, the Ultra 7 runs into a CPU limitation at around 230 FPS at both uh, 1080p and 1440p, while the Ryzen 7 manages to get to around 245 FPS, and at 4K resolution they are roughly equal. In Witcher 3, the 7800X3D is just a little bit faster on all resolutions, but you will never notice that 2-3% difference while actually gaming. And Black Myth Wukong, uh, a game that is very GPU limited even on high settings at 1080p, shows only a small difference between the two CPUs. So if you're just looking at a limited number of specific games, the Core Ultra 7 does look pretty good and pretty appealing. But if you look a bit further, uh, there are a lot of games that show very poor performance or just various issues with this new CPU. Division 2 and Throne and Liberty, for example, require an easy anti-cheat that just did not work at all. So if you run those games, you will either get an error message or a blue screen. Now, I was told last night that this was happening because uh, I was actually testing everything with core isolation off and they're supposed to work if you enable the core isolation. So it is a known issue and they're apparently working on a fix for the games to work with both settings. In Anno 1800, which does bounce between CPU and GPU limits depending on the scene, the Ultra 7 is about 20% behind the AMD Ryzen on 1080p, 15% on 1440p, and 10% on 4K resolution, which is just a lot. A Far Cry 6 runs into CPU limitations at around 150 FPS on every resolution, causing a huge lead for the Ryzen 7 at 1080p and 1440p. And Shadow of the Tomb Raider, even though it's an older game, uh, shows a very similar situation. Now, Microsoft Flight Simulator, which can be both CPU and GPU limited depending on your setup, is clearly showing CPU limits with similar FPS results across all three resolutions. But even if you're playing this game at 4K resolution, the difference between the CPUs is pretty significant. And while Formula 1 2023 showed a pretty good result for the new Intel, Formula 1 2022 makes the Ultra 7 look worse than the Ryzen 7, with about 10% of a difference on 1080p yet again. Now to save a bit of time, I'm not going to talk about 40 different games individually, so let's look at some summaries instead. On 1080p resolution, many games did run at 200 FPS or more. Uh, even GPU-heavy titles like Starfield, Alan Wake 2, and Cyberpunk ran at 120 FPS or more. Only Microsoft Flight Simulator ended up in a bit of a tight spot, but generally, whatever game you throw at it, it will run it fine on this resolution. On 1440p, uh, some games will be GPU limited and some will be CPU limited, but again, most games will run fine even for 120Hz panels and above. On a 4K resolution, you are generally GPU bound, but it is still very good to see a large summary so you can have an idea of what you can expect from this new CPU when combined with a high-end GPU. Now, if we put the 7800X3D numbers next to it, well, um, just look at the graph. A saying that AMD is ahead by 14% on average doesn't even sound as bad as this graph looks, in my opinion. Intel manages to win in three games uh, with only one significant one, while AMD is faster by 10% or more in 20 of the titles, uh, 15 games show a lead of 19% or more, and in six games there is a gap of 39% or more. In Counter-Strike 2, the gap is more than 50%, which is a big deal in a super high FPS esports title. I mean, it is a hard game to test consistently, so there is a little bit of room for some margin of error, but 50% or more just feels completely broken. Uh, even at 1440p, uh, there are still really big differences between the two processors. Now, the gap did shrink a little bit, and there are now a lot more games with not really a meaningful difference, but it is still more than 10% on average, and 13 out of 40 games still show a gap of 10% or more in AMD's favor. At 4K native resolution, things look a little bit more balanced, and Intel has a few small wins more, 
But AMD is still ahead in most titles and a gap of almost 4% on average at 4K resolution is pretty high. Plus, there are still 6 games with a gap of 10% or more. So anyone who enjoys Flight Simulator, for example, will definitely want to get those extra 14% and Counter-Strike 2, again, just looks like there is something else going wrong there. Now, do remember that if you're gaming on a 4K monitor and using upscaling, uh, the internal rendering resolution is then 1080p or 1440p. So even with a 4K monitor, you will still experience uh, bigger differences than this graph shows regularly. But the most unusual thing is that some games were showing pretty big run-to-run -run variances. So typically, uh, when you run the same benchmark five times, uh, you would mostly see results that are within a, a few percent of each other and then maybe one outlier, but not always. Well, with this launch, uh, some games went up and down by 10% or 15% or more between runs uh, with no explanation at all. And it is really hard then to pin down which performance you can expect in those games. And these issues were not just happening with our Core Ultra 7 sample. Uh, we actually spoke to a couple of other reviewers as well. They were mostly testing the new Core Ultra 9 and then with different brands of motherboards and with different memory sets. And they were all running into very similar issues. So this whole launch is such a complete mess in my opinion. And I personally think it should have been postponed until everything is at least stable. I mean, we had quite a bit of messy launches from other companies throughout the years, but Intel has always been pretty straightforward thus far, uh, at least from a reviewer's perspective. Uh, they were not always the fastest and they were not always the most uh, power efficient, but things would just usually work well without many issues and the performance was, yeah, usually pretty consistent. But this is a complete mess and it doesn't really inspire any confidence in any way, which is such a big shame because first impressions and first reviews leave such a big mark and it will be pretty hard to get past it. Anyway, uh, there's still definitely some positive things to point out today, like uh, Intel's power draw that is looking much better than before, uh, both in gaming and in pure CPU workloads, and that the Core Ultra 7 is definitely more capable as an all-around CPU than the Ryzen 7 7800X3D is. But if you're looking for a CPU purely for gaming, AMD is just way superior at the moment. Now, I know that it is still very early and that we still have to look into the new Windows update and a bunch of other variables or possible last minute updates, but regardless, Intel will start selling these processors today and it is my responsibility to honestly tell you what the current situation of this product is. And in this current state, you should definitely wait a bit longer before buying or even considering these processors, especially for gaming. But that is all I had for today. And before I go, let's check out the sponsor of this video. This video was brought to you by Seasonic and their Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of system you have in mind, including the 12 volt high power cable for the latest NVIDIA graphics cards. And to wrap it all up, they now offer a nice and cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching and staying to the end. I really hope this video was at least helpful a bit. If you liked it and you want to see other Core Ultra videos that I'm working on currently, please do consider clicking that subscribe button. Bye guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.